welcome back to another video. I'm your host, Rising Up Oblivion. Today, guys, we have the Persona 5 Royal favorite character, tier list. So, a couple of different things we're going to be talking about here is just the favorite character. It's in terms of personality and the story that they go through and just design and looks. It is not based off of the confidant abilities, even though there are some confidants here. I mean, we have Kodo, we have Ryuji, we have Futaba. We even have both of the versions of Igor here. We have Futaba's mom and whatnot. We have some confidants, but there are other characters here like main bosses and different, you know, sort of NPC characters that you run into. So, this is is not based off of the actual confidants abilities and powers that's for another video this is just flat out just favorite character in terms of looks and personality story yada yada that is what this is going to be based off of so we have S, A, B, C, D, and then F. I added F. Those are for the characters I absolutely cannot stand that absolutely I'm just like I don't like these dudes they're gross they're ugly I already have one <laughs> Kanashiro is automatically there I don't like his design he's just he's the ugly bastard you know he just automatically is put there i don't like him that much he's kind of like a bland character okumura i'm putting also at dm most of the villains are going to end up being there because of just how much you know you're not supposed to like them to begin with so that's why i put them there i love to hate them let's get that right they do a good job at that which is what they're trying to do but in terms of do i like them I'm going to put them at DRF because of those reasons. That's why I have them there. So, let's just go ahead and do that as well. I mean, Okumura is a little bit better than Kamoshida. I mean, Kamoshida is, like, trying to date, like, a child. It's, you know, it's kind of like, okay, that's kind of weird. You know, poor An, let's be honest here. So, he's automatically F tier. Let's just get him out of the way. Madarame, I think, is a cool villain, but... He's trying to steal art. I think he's probably one of the, I don't know, maybe the least harmful characters in the whole game in terms of what he's trying to do. It's mostly just money and greed. It's not like actually like ruining, you know, certain people's lives. I'm sure like, you know, Yosuke would have been fine if things continued the way they were, but yeah, it wouldn't have been fine for certain other characters with, you know, these lot right here. Which brings me to pretty much a standpoint here where I'm just going to go down the line, I think, with these characters now instead of just picking them out at random. I kind of just knew that all of those were going to end up kind of being there just because of, you know, playing through the games and just seeing who they were. I definitely just wanted to have them there. But let's go over my boy, the painter, you know, the blue-haired boy. I'm blue hair. Oh, I'm, it's fading away. It's like green hair now. But boom, right at A tier. He's an artist. He's a designer. Voiced by Matthew Mercer. How can you not love him? Honestly, one of the best characters, I think, in the game. And it's such a cool person to have on the party. He is useful. Like I said, we're not really talking about character abilities. It's more of looks and design. But even if we were to include that, he's still pretty damn good. He shoots the rifle out of all the characters. He has the katana. He's got the fox tail. His mask is cool. That's why he's on A tier, I think, for me. I'm not going to spoil this character's name, but it does involve something with the twins. I'm putting her at B tier. I think the twins, you know, split apart are better just because I think they had better personalities and when they would talk to each other and go back and forth, especially talking to Joker, it's like the good and bad cop sort of deal. So when they are put together, it's kind of like you're getting a bit of both. You see some of Carolina Justine within her. So. I'm going to kind of leave it at that just not to spoil things as much. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of spoilers here because we're talking about all the characters. But I think that's where we're going to put things there just for that. And Hafumi is kind of like the same issue I had with like the... I did the waifu tier. You can go back and look at that. It's kind of cringe, but it's still funny. If she was included in the Phantom Thieves and had a better, longer story, I would have her rated higher. However, because she's not part of the Phantom Thieves and it's kind of like a last minute thing that Atlas sort of had to change because she was going to be similar to Makoto in terms of like one of the girls being on the team being a smart one. She ended up being replaced by Makoto. Makoto sort of absorbed all of the like intelligence, the brainiac sort of character of the team. So because of that, I think I had to put her more towards a B or C. I'm trying to figure out where. I think I'll put her at C just because I think there's so many more characters better than her that are going to be a go up higher. This isn't the final result. I'll change things around a bit. She definitely goes above Madarame, I would say. On, I'm putting on at B tier. She's funny. She's a good introduction character, 
for the game. She gets you hooked in. She's still fun to have throughout the game. Seeing her story arc is good. Seeing her friend talk about, you know, her whole, I'm not going to say the word, and blah, blah, blah. Her being in the hospital because of that and her helping her out. It's honestly really cute and a fun thing to kind of see. Her design's cool. Even her Phantom Thief outfit is really dope as well. I know a lot of people are going to give me hate for that, but it's kind of like, eh, sometimes. But let's talk about my girl Takami. Takami... I had her S tier in the waifu tier list, but I think I have to put her there again because most of the reasons why I put her there is like her character based around that. So I have to put her there. My boy Ryuji, A tier as well. He's just a cool dude, all right? I know he's like the idiot, but they do a good job at making him be kind of like the idiot character, but still be somewhat sensible and sometimes. I think he, in a lot of ways, is kind of like the character that's like, it's like the the player sometimes. It's like a weird situation happens. Everybody's like, let's do it. Let's fight it. He's like, what the fuck? No, it's crazy. What do you mean? I feel like sometimes he's sort of like, not the voice of reason, but like the most <laughs> boneheaded one. And like, I think he's just, still just a good character in that way. Design's cool. The skull's dope. He shoots the shotgun. I really like that. I'm a person who, when I play FPSs, I'm always shooting a shotgun. So I understand the shotgun rain. Makoto... You know it, man. S tier. She's the best. She's a, you know, she's smart. She's a badass. She rides a motorcycle, dude. Come on. She got the brass knuckles, the fisticuffs, brown hair, red eyes. Great design, honestly. Super good. Akechi. I think I would put Akechi on A tier as well. I'm not sure where these boys are going. I think this is the lineup, though. Akechi, I would consider to be A tier. Having Kechi in Royal, I think, is a lot better. Seeing him a lot more often save this for me. If it was just regular Persona 5, I would have Kechi further down. But since it's Royal and we do end up seeing him a lot more, and seeing him a lot more is really cool. Like, playing pool with him, you play darts with him. Character design, you know, he's just basically Light Yagami. Like, Persona 5 Light Yagami in, like, many ways. Which I think is, um, I don't know if they meant to do that. I don't know what they were going for there. He's a detective as well. So it's like literally just Light Yagami from Death Note sort of put together in a character. And the voice works for him well. The design looks cool. He looks nice. It's kind of weird that he's a student and he's like a full-on detective. So that's even more badass. It is a Light Yagami vibe. I really like Death Note. So that might be why I think Akechi as a character and story-wise is still pretty cool. Morgana, I don't like a lot. Uh, I'm putting Morgana C tier because... I'm not a person to really, when he's a cat in the bag, I think that's f like really cool and funny because especially when he's underneath like the desk and you're like at school, that's the funniest bits for me. And he's like, yo, hey, here's the answer to this question. That's the best part of Morgana. But however, when you see Morgana in the metaverse, he looks weird as shit. Giant head. He technically has a mask on, which it, it took me a long time to realize that. He actually has a mask on, so if you take the mask off, he would have like a normal cat-looking face. He has a mask on, which I I don't know why it took me so long to realize, but it did. Overall, he's also annoying. They could go to bed all the time, which... There's so many memes about it, I get it, but I had to put him there. Honestly, I think he's just annoying, I have to say. I don't think Teddy's not nearly as annoying, although I don't like Teddy's voice as much. I like Morgana's voice more, but in terms of what the character's always having you do, I'd say Morgana's a little bit more annoying. Don't kill me for that. I think Persona 3's mascot's the best one. That's where I stand. Joker himself. Should we save Joker for last? Ooh, who do we want to save for last? Let's save Joker and Futaba, because I just... And Haru, because I know... And Sojo. Let's do all that at the end. Because I just know this is going to be, like, the the top here. <laughs> in terms of, like, how hardly I'm going to be judged when put all of them there. I forget this dude's name. Mr. Gunman. Honestly, somewhat bland. Um, if you play through his story, though, it does get better. And he does, you know, sort of talk more. I think he's... One of the more unique looking characters and unique in terms of like story. Nobody's really like him. Like the badass dude that's kind of quiet and has tattoos and just chills and sits back. That's like his whole character. He's literally that dude. Everybody knows that kind of guy in real life. He's just that guy. And it's kind of bland to me, I think, personally. Miss Fortune Teller, I'm going to put her at B. It's cool seeing her. Although, 
it is unique. I will give it that. I don't know if we've had any just flat out tarot card readers. And it's pretty funny how the game pretty much uses tarot cards for the different, um, you know, like confidants in terms of like who they are, what they classify under, and stuff like that. So this nice singer there, she has a good design. The black bandana looks cool, blonde hair, everything else. It's nice. She does try to like jip you right off the bat by making you buy a super expensive stone, which is pretty funny considering like how like that does sometimes happen in real life and people do charge a lot of money for that kind of thing. So I think that's a funny, like interesting dynamic. I'll put her in B tier. It's above average, but I don't consider it to be A or S tier. That's why she's sort of sitting in B personally. So I believe this is the fake Igor right here. So fake Igor... I'm going to put C tier. Um, man, I got to figure out what C t what's happening here in C tier. I think Madarame is better than most of these characters here. I think that works for me. So that's fake Igor. Then we have real Igor. I'm putting real Igor at... Uh, I don't know if I want to do A. I'll put him in A. I think the real Igor voice is better. That's the one we're all used to. I don't know if I have it backwards here. Is this backwards? No, this is the real Igor, right? Yeah, this looks like Persona 4 Igor. Igor, I think, from all the other games is so much better than, like, we have, like, fake Igor here. So, just because he's fake and not the real Igor, that's why he's lower. I like the other Igor voice better, like the actual Igor voice. So, I'm putting him at A tier. The giant nose, the schnozzer. I relate, man. I got the big schnoz. I understand it, man. He's there. Big baddie from the beginning. I'm going to put him at the very end of C tier because, like I said, they're the bad guys. They have to be lower down down the tier list. That's why they're there. I'm putting them there. Kawakami, A tier. <laughs> um, this includes Becky as well. Her, you know, you know, maid outfit, whatever you want to call it. I'm putting her there. You know what? No, I'm putting her here. No, yeah, because I'd consider some of the boys to be better than that. I would do that. I would consider some of the boys to be better than that. Shinya, this is a Persona 5 royal exclusive character. I'll put her in B tier. Or he, I honestly don't know. I haven't seen a lot of this character from the playthrough I've done. So, honestly, I don't know this character a whole lot. This one, actually, I'm going to have undecided and I'm not going to change. I don't know too much about that character to, to be going about this. Um... Man, I don't know. Oh, I'm bad at names. That's why I can't remember his name. Um, where do I put him? There's a lot of C-tier characters, which is what I'm trying to stray away from. I don't want a thousand C-tier characters, because that's kind of boring. Um, I don't want, like, an easy cop out. I put him in B-tier, because helping him out is fun. Seeing his redemption through the election is pretty cool as well. Having you know, be the person there helping him do that. It's pretty nice. Uh, Personality-wise, I think he's kind of weak. I think that's his whole trope. You're trying to help him, you know, be stronger and stuff. But because of that, I think I'll put him B tier. And even after you do help him all the way through, there's not a ton of resolve. There's not a lot of things that really change. He just sit, still sits there and, like, preaches and does political things. There's not a ton of resolve. That's why I put him in B tier. If, if it's something more dramatic happens, then I put him higher up. Once again, I'm bad at names. This man, um, we'll put him in A tier as well, but further down. So, based on where they are within the tier is where I think they should be. I think he's above Igor, but he's next to Ketchy. Him and Ketchy both I consider to be almost perfect characters, but they just needed a little bit more, and they probably could have ended up reaching S tier if they would have just done just a tad bit more, but because they did not, they're not quite there. Sainijima, I'd also consider A tier, but I'd put her further up. Um, maybe even pay it past my boy here. Come on, tier list. There we go. The reason why I have her so far there is because she is actually technically... One of the first characters you ever meet within the entire game. You see her the entire time. Her palace is cool. Seeing the resolve go there. See the dynamic between the sisters. She has gray hair, red eyes. Her outfit's cool. She's a detective. I think she has one of the best, like, sort of story arcs within the entire game. In terms of her changing the, like, network she's part of. Kind of becomes corrupted. I think she has one of the most interesting parts of the whole game. And we end up seeing a lot more of her than any of the other characters, really. 
if you kind of think about it in terms of like from start to finish of the game, we end up seeing her a lot more than what we really think we end up seeing her. Um, Hoya, I'll put her in B tier. Um, it's kind of goofy and funny going to the bar all the time to see her. Her character design is not the best. If you think about it, she almost kind of has, she's like the Chie haircut and some of the boyishness of Chie in some ways, but it's like done all wrong. I don't really like the character too much. There's a reason why I think, I think she has a devil like tarot card, which kind of makes sense. She's sort of just laid back, just sitting in the bar, talking to kids, basically trying to get news about them. It makes sense why she's doing that. It helps her with her work, but I don't think it's overall too interesting. And her personality really doesn't change a whole lot throughout the game. And she ends up faking being like a boyfriend with you at some point, I think, within the game or something like that. Or boyfriends with you, I guess I should have said, is what I meant by that. And it sort of just comes off weird and awkward. Vitaba's mom, I think design-wise and story-wise, is done very well. The whole entire palace without Futaba's mom, I don't think would have been nearly half as good with Futaba's palace. Futaba's palace is great. Seeing our character have that resolve, it's very nice to see that go all the way through. Her and her mom finally connecting. She ends up figuring out stuff about the metaverse that I don't even think our characters quite know, which I don't think that's ever been in a Persona game. We're like an outside character that we don't really know a whole ton about, actually figured out and discovered things about the metaverse. We don't, I think we know that she does go into it at some point, I think, or we don't really know that, but who knows how much, you know, Futaba's mom actually knew about the metaverse and things that she did within the metaverse. We don't fully understand that and what all she actually knew about the metaverse overall. Sojiro, my boy, S tier. Right off the bat, I didn't like Sojiro. Playing through that game, Persona 5, my first time, I didn't like him at all. I actually hated him. I disliked him. It's always, oh, you're back. You know, every single time you join, <laughs> you go to the Cafe LeBlanc, he's just there always saying that. He doesn't ever seem like he cares too much about you. But when I played through the all of Persona 5, and like right at the end, he like takes his glasses off, and like wipes a tear off his eye. I'm like, oh my God, Sojiro, why did you do that to me? It's one of the best things for the ending is seeing Sojiro like be sad that you're leaving be sad that you're leaving the game and it's sort of reflective of the player in terms of like yeah the game is ending it's like you're you finished the anime got to the last episode there's none left that's kind of how i feel about sojiro and seeing his arc is super nice i'd put sojiro higher up i i hate the bad father thing i mean that's like it's a persona 4 as well but it's hard, and seeing the Futaba Palace really gets you more connected to Sojiro as well because of that. Haru, my girl. I think design-wise, character... Oh, I'm having a hard time figuring out what's going on in S-tier. Oh, boy. I'm having a hard time figuring this out. Makoto's number one. Oh, shit. What have I done? Um. Oh, no. What have I done? Um. I don't know what's going on here. I know I'd hit a wall at some point. I don't want to have a ton of S-tier characters. But I feel like all of these are justified and belong there. I think they really do all belong there. Yeah, Makoto. The whole story there with her sister. Her spying at you at first and becoming your friend. Design, yes. Makoto definitely belongs there. Haru, she's got the floof, you know. She's got the hair. She's cute. Design-wise, probably one of the more interesting characters. Like, look at all the characters, hairstyles, and looks. Haru is definitely different compared to the rest of them. Not only that, she's like the filthy rich character. She basically owns McDonald's after you beat the dad's palace, pretty much. I think this all works out pretty well. Futaba, like I said, it's more like a little sister or something like that. But I still put her in B -t or in A tier. In terms of like how interesting her palace was. She goes into her own palace, which is pretty dope. She's very smart too. She contacts the Phantom Thieves to change her heart. She then goes into her own palace, helps you defeat 
her palace's cognition of her mom and then you see the whole resolve they're having with her mom she comes back she changes she steals her own heart that's what i'm trying to get out here she literally is a phantom thief that steals her own heart that's more interesting than i think what happens with any of the other palaces with just the main character that's within them she goes into her own palace and changes everything up i'm not sure if that's ever been done in persona history really so that is why i had to put her there design wise it's cute as shit everybody knows that i have a friend who cosplays her all the time tons of people cosplay her there's a reason why she's up there so that makes sense joker i'll put joker at c tier i don't think joker is that interesting and it's a clean slate character and it makes sense because of that literally the only thing i can really say about that and it makes sense he's supposed to be a clean slate character you're supposed to be you know personified no pun intended there through him throughout the game it's like the pokemon games you choose the name and you're living through them it's what you would say is what joker is saying pretty much you're living through him he does have small dialogue parts like um, when you're you know writing down in your book to save or something like that he does have small little lines here and there but because of that if we're looking at him not as the player but just as the character he doesn't talk a lot he doesn't really do a lot it's sort of this character that's supposed to also look like anybody can personify themselves through him he doesn't have crazy wacky hair it's not like long you know orange hair or something like that red eyes it's just black hair black eyes wears a black outfit he's got a knife and a pistol that's all he really has and i love well, the grapple i guess if you want to consider that from smash and from royal that's all he really has going for him and because of those things i have to put him at c tier he's passable he's the player i'd even maybe put him at the bottom of c tier and i think about it just because i don't think he should be hated on too much because he is just the main character and you're living through him. But because of those reasons also, I can't put him much higher. I'm putting him at the bottom of B tier. And if you also look at the other characters from the other Persona games, Persona 3's Makoto, which is the name of the main character, not Persona 5's Makoto. They change his name later or something like that. I'm not sure why, but design-wise looks cooler, I think. The blue hair... They shoot themselves in the head for like the persona thing don't demonetize me youtube for saying that but i think that's a lot cooler design looks better school outfit looks cooler overall i think just persona 3 is better when it comes to the main character same thing with persona 4 i think it's also better i would put the persona 3 and 4 main characters probably at a tier I'm not gonna grade this person because I just don't know what to really put them as. I need to I need to do more of their confidant and do more of their stuff first before I really quite judge them. That's one character out. You can sort of decide this one for me. Let me know down in the comment section below what you think. I'm not putting them at F tier. I just messed that up and I can't put it back. But I think that's it. I think that's my definitive Persona 5 Royal character tier list. This is subject to change, of course because I need to do multiple playthroughs to fully grasp everybody and completely fill out all confidants to 100% understand all of the characters. And not only that, some people spam through dialogue. I spam through dialogue every once in a while, but um, I have no idea how long this video is going to be. I figured it's going to be a long one, considering of how long I've been doing this, but this was a big video I really wanted to get out and really wanted to have just to just to show off to everybody what I think about the game. Tell me what you think about it. I think this is definitive here. I might switch a couple of the S tiers or a couple of the A tiers around, maybe the middle parts, but I think that's it. I think that definitively kind of shows what I want. But um, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Like, comment, subscribe for more content. If you like these kinds of videos, I'll do more in the future. Click the bell so you're notified when a brand new video comes out so you can get new videos like this or like persona atlas shimagami tensei news right away but um thank you so much for watching